И спорт Бэтском – уникальное место для настоящего геймера. Только здесь возможны ставки на киберспортивные события. Ты знаешь толк в самых популярных играх и готов рисковать? Смотри регулярные трансляции и зарабатывай реальные деньги. И спортбетском. Живой азарт и холодный расчет. All right, welcome back once again, ladies and gentlemen. This is Room on Fire. I'm Anders. With me is Semra and Vendetta as always. And we're going to have LDLC versus Nostalgia. Best of one game for the SLTV Star Series. Hope you guys are looking forward to it. And we will switch it right on over to the game and then unmute Semra and Vendetta. What's up, guys? Not much. Just uh, eagerly anticipating getting the game underway, really. I mean, we've uh, got quite a few good games coming up. Yes, we do, and it, you know, not to be rude, but it sort of feels like these first couple of games, the last one and probably this one too, are just games we need to get out of the way so we can get onto the the real magic, right? Yeah, I I think that's a fair assessment, and obviously that's not not a dig at either Nostalgia or uh, ESC. It's just there there's more even matchups to come than uh, what we're most likely going to see right now. Yeah, it feels like it. Yeah. It definitely does. Well, I mean, this, this is the thing, you know, they were invited to participate in the group stage, and you're obviously going to have, like, the, the ultra-top teams that we're used to seeing perform well at LAN, who get top eight finishes, and then you're going to have the teams that don't necessarily have the experience or the time or the support to be able to go as far as some other teams have. So, Nostalgia, I think, right now are sitting uh, somewhere in the mid of the group. Actually, no, they're dead last, 0-0-5. Zero, zero in the group right now for Star Series. So really, you know, they're still looking to get a win on the board here. What would be insane is if they actually managed to pull it off versus LDLC, who last night weren't having like the best performance because we know that LDLC has spent the past couple of weeks in vacation. So they're, they're definitely rusty and feeling the, feeling the time off, the Frenchman. Yeah, this True. is the Russians' time to strike. If, if uh, at any given time, this would be the one, I think. Yeah, it's, I mean, you're right about LDLC. I think they were looking a little bit rusty yesterday, but it it seems to me like it wasn't like a really thick layer of rust, the type where you think, oh, oh, you know, damn, what's LDLC up to? It just felt like, felt to me like they were hitting the, most of the shots they should hit. It was just down to some rotation timings that were a couple of seconds off, which is enough for you to look really bad. But, you know, once you get that back in track, I think LDLC are going to be pretty much right back on top again. Yeah, I'd, I'd agree with that. And... It's not like CS Rust is uh, something that takes a long while to get rid of. That's just a day or two, a uh, couple of hours on deathmatch, and you're back to go. And you're, I mean, you're good to go again. It feels like it, right? But either way, we will be on Dust 2. We have eight players on the server, and I want to thank all of you for tuning in. Obviously, um, you know, it's going to be a, a pretty great night of Counter-Strike. We're starting off a little bit slow, but then it's only going to get better and better. So you should go and tell your friends to join the channel and uh, come have fun with us. And hopefully you guys will click that follow button as well, so we can keep gathering more and more followers here on the channel. And also check out our Twitter account, which is AdventDetaGo. It's at OnFireSemla and at OnFireAnders. That's on Twitter if you feel like it. And what you can also do, if you're up for it, if you want to uh, participate in the raffle that we're going to be doing for tomorrow's tournament, is that you can go to facebook.com forward slash casekinggaming. I put the link in the chat as well. Um, I think the, the the raffles are restricted to European countries, so you guys from everywhere else, I'm so sorry. But um, that's a logistics problem, of course. But you can still go and check it out and um, you know, like, click the like button and... You know, our sponsors are going to be super happy, and then we're happy, and that means we can bring more and more back to you guys so that we can get more Counter-Strike. There's a whole circle going on like that. Well, I think tomorrow we're going to have a raffle with, uh, with I believe, the Zoe's newest mouse, the FK1. So that's yes. going to be that's going to be given away tomorrow. Uh, one one the that only we've thing... signed, Samla. Yeah, that's right. One that we've signed. So, I mean, the one, th the one thing, the way for you guys to get your hold uh, your hands on that mouse, and it is a good mouse, is to like the page. Basically, if you like the you like the Facebook page, and then you're you'll get into the raffle that way. And I, uh, I, I believe we'll at have the... another link for to follow as well. But yeah, I looked at the picture, and your signature, you know, looks like it's it's been written by an adult, and my signature kind of <laughs> looks like a child. That's just what? how it is. I can't. I wanna it. Where's this picture? It's, I think it's on the if it's on the Facebook page. I saw it somewhere else. I'm sure I saw a picture of it. And I thought, oh god, it's, <laughs> it's happening again. 
Uh, this needs to uh, be linked. Okay, it's, not, it's someone get on it. I've got to find, find it. that picture. Find okay, it. if not, we'll find it for you guys for tomorrow. It'll be a, you know another teaser, so we'll we'll do that if that's what it is. But yeah, my signature is never the same thing twice, and it always looks like it's someone from the third grade that's written it. So well, I, so I, it's, it's really hard to take advantage of. I guess it's going to be hard to fake your signature because it's different every time. It's true. Not even that's I'm, a good point. But and no one can ever say, "Oh, you signed this document." It's like, yeah, well, you know. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, there, there's pros and cons here, obviously. Another another thing, though, exactly. Nobody can fake it, but then again, how do you prove that you signed it? Yeah. We'll see. It's um, pretty tough, pretty tough. How will right we now, ever survive as a grown-up Enders? I don't really plan to. I Okay, I think it's, forever, it, forever young. I think, yeah, I think being a grown-up is hugely overrated. It is, it is. It's just more expenses and more stress, isn't it? <laughs> it is. It's terrible. Don't do it. Yeah, don't grow up. Remain 16 forever. Yeah, maybe a little bit older. Okay, 18, so you're allowed to drink in most places in Europe. Yeah. I guess. There's, there's because still well, some when, you hit, when you hit 20 plus, you're still going to get to the point where you have a lot of expenses. That's because I, I'm, I'm assuming at some point you're going to move out from your parents' house, right? Yeah. I mean, that is definitely a plus it is. Yeah. There's no doubt about that. All right, so somewhere in between, but unfortunately, you know that can't happen. You know, you you, know, you got to just keep rolling with it, I guess. And yeah, that's that's the plan. That's the plan, isn't it? One I, day at I time. I turned twenty nine this year. Just imagine how crazy that is. Well, you can always look at it this way in terms of esports. You're always going to be younger than Red Eye. Oh, that is actually very comforting, and much younger than Scoots. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> Scoots and Red Eye are pretty much like up in the same. What the rarefied atmosphere of old? Well, they've been here since the dinosaur age of uh, yeah, there you go. esports for a very long time. Although you can go and talk to them and you know get good advice. I do. I do find myself talking to both Paul and uh, Scott on every every once in a while for some of that sage old advice. It's pretty. It's it's good stuff. Um, are, they, are they sitting by the fire with their cane? And <laughs> I, <what's laughs> I think they would. You're making it sound like they're some wizened old wizards. You know. Well, do they have do they have a robe like Yoda? That would be great. Do they make if, you carry if, a backpack around? If ever there was a talk show done by Red Eye or Scoots, that should be the setting for it, right? You know, <laughs> Alderaan. A fire, a fire in a fireplace, right? Crackling <laughs> away. You know, the bold wine in a, in a clay goblet. I would love that. But I, I would tune in for sure. <laughs> and then but just I, I'm, now I'm kind of gonna be disappointed if Scoots shows up a G3 without a Yoda costume. I'm not gonna lie. You hear that, Scoots? <laughs> Maybe he will. Maybe yeah. he will. Well, yeah, we've put him on notice right now, so he knows what he has to do. I, I hear that's like the the amount of accessories you can p pick up at tax free on airports is just, <laughs> just beyond amazing. So, so you can make it work, Scoots. No doubt about that. No doubt about that. Look, speaking of the good old days, do you guys remember when the doors on Dust Two were made of wood and not this weird metal? Oh well, yeah, the doors were always like this. <laughs> That was back in the days when, well, when we were young, wasn't it? Well, you, you know, I thought it was because I played the game on low graphics, so, you know, they just had to put more doors <laughs> in because, right? I, I mean, <laughs> so you upgrade. If you turn them all the way up, they're, they're made of diamond. That's how but, it is. Actually, did you yeah. see it? There was this thread on the CSGO subreddit where there's this one guy who had been tinkering with his config, and he wasn't aware that there had been an update uh, over the night. So he tinkered with his config, gone to bed, woken up, Fired up Dust 2, and the doors were messed up. <laughs> and, and he really had no idea what he had done. So he'd made a thread on CSGO Reddit asking people, like, I think I botched my settings, guys. Can someone help me get the doors back to normal? <laughs> you know what I've just realized? The doors in the CT spawn are actually still made of wood. So how does that the work? The doors in the CT spawn? What do you mean? The doors hmm, in the CT spawn? There are some wooden doors in CT oh, spawn. Oh, yeah, like the double doors inside a spawn? Oh, someone a valve is about to be fired. <laughs> And the ones in the mid- oh, they're not really the same doors, are they? No, okay, they moved those. You're right. Look, I will never, ever, ever get used to it. I'd actually, I've, you know, from a gameplay point of view, it's obviously better than being able to one-shot people through, but the look of it, I will- I don't think I'll ever get used to it, but here's the thing, I- my brain adjusts very slowly. If actually, I think maybe my brain doesn't adjust at all anymore, because for me, I don't know if you can feel this, Vendetta, but for me, the Galil and the Famas are still the new weapons for me in Counter-Strike. I still think of them as these odd weapons that they added at some point. 
I just have, <laughs> yeah. I will never ever get used to the idea that you know those are. Of course, you buy them now because because they're good weapons and they fit within the game and they have done so for a very long time. But I still think of those weapons as being sort of relatively new additions. Well, they, well, yeah. I, I guess I, I I'm coming from the same place as you, and also I, I feel like the the scope rifles are fairly new in a sense. Obviously, they've been reworked since CS:GO came out. But they weren't heavily used. I mean, we saw them back in CPL 2002, 2003, 2004, those kind of, like that era of CS. Mm. And then they just more or less disappeared until CSGO came around. That's so every true. time you see it, it's kind of a surprise. You're like, oh, well, this gun exists. <laughs> and obviously that's barring the period where the AUG was pretty okay yeah. in CSGO. Yeah. Wow. There was that. There was that. There was a few golden days when the org was more than just okay. <laughs> <laughs> Slightly okay. above average. All right. Look, we have ten people on the server, so thank you for your patience, guys. I know we got a little bit delayed starting this, and we don't want to get too delayed because we have some incredible games coming up. But for now, we have Nostalgia versus LDLC. The Russians playing the French. It's going to be a best of one game on Dust Two, and this is the SLTV Star Series Season Ten. You're on Room on Fire, and welcome, for, welcome, and thank you for joining us. I'm Anders with me, is Semler and Vendetta, as they always are. I hope you guys are going to have a good time. So. The Russians, what are they going to do apart from just, you know, having a little bit of luck? What what can they do to beat LDLC here? I, I, want, I wanted to say, well, winning the knife would be a good start, but then again, we're playing Dust 2, so... Yeah. So that there's, doesn't matter that much. Exactly. There's not too much value in, in uh, winning the knife on Dust 2, so... Uh, it's hard to say. I think Dust 2 does lend, it say, uh, lend itself to, I guess, what... You, you might call a bit random gameplay. Uh, at least it lends itself towards the style that mixed teams often play. So True. that could work in the benefit of nostalgia. But again, if you're playing up against a well-structured team, they shouldn't have too much problems of figuring out what they need to do actually to just counteract that. But well, I guess we'll have to see. But my my hopes aren't too high for nostalgia. No. Well, I like right now that Nostalgia, they actually choose to stay on the CT side as well. So that's that's cool. We're seeing more and more teams, they win the knife round, and they decide to start on the CT side of Dust 2. So, you know, the the the, the less the less favored side, perhaps, but, but still, they're, they just want to see how many rounds they can get on the, D, on the T side, or the CT side before switching over to the T. Yeah, Fly rushing up pretty early here, really aggressive on Catwalk, and he's going to be forced back. Just too many Glocks in the middle, and... CT pistols are generally pretty good at range, but once you get up to that medium range and there's more than one Glock, you do have a, a pretty tough choice on your hands. If you stay and fight and run out of bullets, you're definitely going to die, so you need to hit nothing but headshots. And speaking of fighting, over on Long there, Hooch actually does get a really good kill in Katie with instant return, and then comes Spiker with another one. Looking good here for the Russian team, but Spiker has to stay alive, and he's actually being surrounded. This is not a good position. Out of bullets as well, and he's going to be going down. MSC comes in with a great kill, now needs a little bit more, and he's got his... What? It's a pretty knife, I'll give him that, but there's no reason to be flashing it out in the open like that. Please stop it. Barrow is trying to see if he can get back into it. Kaylee has picked up three kills and is trying to run for the B bomb site, but he's going to be stopped in CT spawn. Oh, is this going to work? Is this actually going to work? There's no way. There's no way that Barrow doesn't look. Are you kidding me? Kaylee, he lays the trap and Barrow walks right into it. He had no idea. <laughs> Bait, set, fish caught. That was the just, big hook. Yeah, that was brilliantly played by Kaylee, though. You have to give him credit for it. That uh, was just uh, a really sneaky play. And obviously, if, it, if that <laughs> doesn't work, if he doesn't do that, then he basically have given away a bomb plant, a, a, like a secured source of income for LDLC. Yeah. So true, ballsy yeah. play, but it works out. So people are saying he was out of ammo MSC, but what had he been shooting at? He came up from the CT spawn? At I, he may have been out. I'm sorry if I missed that, but I, I did not see him firing. I mean, he fired a few bullets, but I, you know, just instinctively didn't feel like he fired 12 bullets then. So very confusing. Happy waiting over on long. Going to take down Spiker. That leaves the man with the knife alone, and he's going to man up once again. And actually, that is going to be a headshot. Oh, Apex. That's so frustrating. You have two teammates just waiting for him, and you still go down. But overall, it's a good start for LDLC. Yeah, and... Uh yeah, quite as expected as well, I'd say. 
not really the, uh, the biggest of surprises. And we would expect LDLC to pick up the next round as well, because Nostalgia are once again ecoing. As they should right now. I see a couple of people in chat saying he definitely was not out of ammo. So, um, well, w that will have to be a mystery. What happened there, I'm not quite sure. But it, it looked interesting. Not, I mean, either way, it was definitely fun stuff. MSC charging up and actually does very good damage to Happy here. But Spiker can't pick up after him. So it's going to be all LDLC all the way. Hooch goes down and it's down to fly. One on five. A single kill would be... You know, if nothing else, just a little bit of confidence maybe on their side. And Uzi does take a lot of damage, but it's not enough. Good Apex. He even gets headshot. Apex, you took your time with that, but that was a bit of a cheek play there, getting the boost up on the headshot box. So now we get to see what Nostalgia have in store for us, and they don't let us down. A double op play is going to be their go-to call here. Hooch and Spiker both with the sniper rifles. So I like that. I think this is a solid investment from from Nostalgia. If you if you're gonna do this, then why not just try and see if you can out snipe them? That's definitely something that could be done on this map. The the trouble is that if if you upset LDLC, if they get really angry at this, then you know what happens if Kaylee picks up an AWP. I'm not sure that's gonna work out in their favor, but I'm I you know I like the fact that they're trying anyway. Good defense from MSC up on Cat already. He manages to pick off Happy, who was going for a peek. He did go in after a flash, but a little bit late there. Instead, this is going to set up for the B-split push. And I was about to say that Barrow was going to be the linchpin here for Nostalgia. He needed to stay alive. But Uzi is already racking up kills in mid. That's three for him so far. How were the last two headshots? He just flicked his AK around, and one of them was even mid-air. That looked sick from Uzi, but I think he might go down here. Spike has a pretty good off with angle, but it, I mean, I don't even know what's happening wow. here. Uzi just hit four headshots with the AK and made it look incredibly easy as well. That's seven one and one for him, and a pretty terrifying start for LDLC now. Yeah, the double up setup didn't quite work out the, the way Nostalgia had hoped for it to do, and... Uh... I mean, they got off to a good start. They got the entry frag, but I'm a bit surprised why they opted to go for four people towards the A bomb site when they have a double op setup, and none of them, none of the ops were towards mid. So that kind of surprised me. But yeah, good run from LDLC, especially Uzi. Yeah, doing the work now. Obviously, Eco and again is nostalgia. Happy, ready to get some Eco frags, but he's only going to get the one. Very annoying. You know, it's the biggest pleasure in Counter Strike is picking up those Eco frags to make your stats look better and. They just deny him of that pleasure. Very nicely done by Nostalgia too. They put two guys through house and they're already... I mean, they're getting chased down now at this point. Fly with an AK is about to wrap around on Apex as well. He's going to get the drop on him. Apex, does he even have any idea that he's here? None. Goes down. Good headshot there by Fly. That brings it to a three on two here. Good result so far from Nostalgia. Yeah, they are getting some important kills in here, but they... It'd be nice if he could hold on to this AK because they do need the money at this point and... He is pretty much just being chased down. Uzi is nearby, and you know if if the trend follows true, then he's going to be hitting another headshot in just a second. We're looking at him. Fly's going to walk in, and actually it will be Fly to pick it up. It's a great triple kill. He's going to go for one more, and actually Kaylee will get the shot on him. But now Kaylee has an AWP, and that in itself is a pretty terrifying idea if you're on Nostalgia's team. That's not something you want to be dealing with. It looks like Spiker's going to be the one picking up the AWP here for Nostalgia. We saw him put a good put it to good use the other night when they played versus on bots. So we know that he can actually land some shots. Now we just have to see him pull it off here versus LDLC. And with Kaylee to boot, Happy has an AWP as well. It's a double AWP play for a LDLC as well, in fact. Happy at Longhouse, aid and aid. Yeah, indeed. He's down to 45. Up on short. Look at Fly holding. Two people going to be walking in front of him, and he gets exactly zero for that. A little bit unfortunate. That could have been a great double headshot. But he does do some damage to both Uzi and Happy, which, um, you know, even further cements the idea that he could have actually probably killed both of them. I think he probably should have killed both of them. That's a tough position to be in, though. Uh, even, even though he died, he actually did such a significant amount of damage that uh, I think it's okay. For uh, Nostalgia, it definitely doesn't end the round for them at that point, but MSC needs to come up huge right now. Yeah, gets the one, and Maniac will take him down. Now it's on Spiker, and he gets the first shot, but two more are coming for him, and they're going to smoke it off. He's going to run through the smoke aggressively towards them. I mean, if that had worked, we would have been calling him a genius, but at this point, it looked like he kind of threw that away. Now Barra goes down to Apex, and it's a one-on-two for Hooch. That was a hell of a shot from Apex as well. Barra caught him mid-air apex lands and then just turns and casually gets the headshot that was beautiful work good nade onto apex but it doesn't quite do the 
Hootcher is still alive, and he gets spotted out. Apex knows exactly where he is now. Nice little pop flash there by Apex, but he doesn't speed up. He doesn't look to, to try and take advantage of it. He's just trying to keep Hooch busy. That was a great jump shot. Hooch takes down Apex, but still has to deal with Kaylee. And he's going to go looking for him, and Kaylee just mans up with a pistol and takes him down. But the jump shot was definitely quite cinematic. So well played, Hooch. I mean, it's a tough position to be in with the bomb planet where it was. Very unlikely that he was ever going to win that. But it's bad news for, for Nostalgia, of course. It's now 6-0 and zero in favor of the French team. And not a lot going their way right now. That's... That's for sure. But I also think that Spiker did make the, the right decision actually there at long. Opting to, to aggressively go towards the, the cave area because he was going to get sandwiched in regardless if he stood still. So I think that was a right call from him. Unfortunately, it didn't work out. No, and unfortunately this round, the timing was so unfortunate for Nostalgia. So once uh, this is over, let's try and go through what happened. It's a two on four right here. Hooch down CT spawn, Barra trying to run up, the bomb is still not down, but very unlikely that they can actually win this. Apex is waiting, he's going to take down Hooch, leaving Barra alone, he gets a shot on Kaylee, but that doesn't even matter. And the bomb is all the way up in T spawn, so LDLC, aren't, they're not even trying to win, they're just hunting for the Franks. What was really sad about what happened is that Nostalgia went for a boost up on short, which is a really cool idea, but then the setup that they were going to have was going to be one, they were just going to wait here basically, and because LDLC just charged on short, I think Nostalgia actually got caught off guard. Whereas as normally, if you're on the CT side and you boost up, you want to catch the terrorists off guard. So it was kind of a, a switch around there. Yeah, I mean, that, that, whole, that's... that whole boost is for a slower paced game, right? They're looking for a slow paced round and LDLC, that was just the last thing they had on their minds. I actually think that's the fault of whoever's crossing over towards B. Whoever's crossing over B at that point needs to give as much information as he can from what he sees when he crosses over mid. Either he's going to see, either he's going to say that, well, this is smoked off, so there's the potential for the opponents to come a short down push. mid or through suicide and onto short. Otherwise, if it's not smoked off, then obviously you should be able to see them. Yeah. If there's nobody in suicide at that point when he crosses over, then they're probably not, or then they're not going to be fast enough to get onto catwalk before the two guys being boosted up are. So I think that's definitely like shows an issue with the com uh, communication and that's definitely sorted out before they play a team like LDLC. I mean, eight and zero is a pretty big statement from the French team. It was looking a little bit, you know, there were some close rounds earlier on when Nostalgia made it, you know, into a one-on-one -on -one the pistol round amongst other things. But right now it's just looking like they're not going to stop though. Apex does go down and that might be the best start yet. Oh, nicely done there by Hooch. He actually got caught with a nade in his hand. He was still able to recover from the situation. However, Uzi does manage to peek through the mid doors and catch him off guard. It's going to be Fly now, who's right around the corner. Uzi may not expect this. Fly actually peeking through, puts a shot on, but doesn't get any from it. He only has the info now that a man crossed the lower dark. And Kaylee sneaking up onto short. It's going to open up the whole of the A bomb side down on long. MSC is going to have to come up big here. He needs to kill Kaylee so they can stop this from happening. And Kaylee's right up there takes him down MSC not even really realizing what was happening I think he thought Kaylee was still waiting and apparently nobody has any clue about how Kaylee moves around that was a triple kill from Kaylee two of them didn't even you know just pretended to ignore him basically yeah again I, it seems like there's something very wrong with how nostalgia are communicating with each other at this point because uh, at least after Kaylee gets that first frag on the guy in, in slow, there should definitely be, everyone should be aware of what he's doing and how, where he's able to be in the next five to 10 seconds. And I mean, Kaylee hits one through the double doors, then takes down another one as they try and rush lower dark. And the guy who made it through, he dies anyway to, uh, to Happy there. No, actually, sorry, to Apex. So things are just looking awful right now for the CT side. Barra might be in a position to pick up a double kill, but he's gonna go down as well. Oh my God, this is a slaughter if I've ever seen one. Well, they're just turning this into a, into a pure aim fight, aren't they, LDLC? I mean, look at them. They still have the majority of their nades. They aren't even using their smokes. They don't even use their flashes. All four of the remaining members of LDLC have all four flashes. Uh, so, I mean, all two flashes on them. I mean, like, they're, they're literally just walking into parts of the map and just winning the aim goal flat out. It doesn't really seem like Nostalgia are able to put up much of a fight when it comes to it. They're, they're not going to come out ahead in, a, in an aim fight. They need to be trying to put something together where they catch LDLC off guard, not the other way around. Yeah, and I think that's uh, a very important point that you bring up. One of the ways that Nostalgia can actually get rounds is to catch LDLC off guard. And <laughs> LDLC, by never picking up a nade and just running out with guns blazing, they're never going to get caught off guard. 
you can never be surprised by someone coming at you if you're old, already bolstered up with an AK. Sure, if you had a smoke or a flash in your hand, then you know that might give the advantage to one of the nostalgia players who are coming at you. But if you opt never to use a nade, then how are they actually going to catch you off guard? Well, it's, so far, it hasn't really happened a lot. This time they have two AWPs again. We're looking at an 11-0 scoreline. And another shot through the door is going to be hit, but K repeaks and Hooch will take him down. So a pretty good kill to start it off with, but we've seen that before and it didn't work. And once again, Apex is there to return the kill. Oh, no. <laughs> you kind of love that, right? Apex. And he didn't even like worry about it, Apex. He didn't go jumping for the gun or anything either. He really just looked like, okay, this is something I'm going to do real quick and then get back to business, right? It's like he was dropping off uh, his laundry at the washing machine. I don't know. That's <laughs> ridiculous. It's the hold my beer approach to Counter Strike. Check, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Check, check this out, guys. Yeah. I'm doing it. <laughs> but All the, right. the, Fuchs did the exact same thing that he did the previous round. He got an entry frag, which oh. I think is a bit of a mistake because he gets the entry frag and then he actively searched for the repeak. He wants to get one more. And in that type of situation, you should just be content with sending your team off to a great start and be happy with that. Find a new position, hold an angle, and just take it from there. But I mean, come on, there's a little bit of luck involved here for LDLC as well. They, they just got grenaded down to 2 HP. Well, Apex did in the middle. He could have dropped a bomb there, so I mean, that was just unfortunate. It is a 2 on 2, but MSC gets headshot, and Uzi is still on 100% HP. While well, now down to about 80. This grenade is going to finish Apex, but I'm not sure that's going to be quite enough. They still got Uzi to deal with, and now he's going to turn it into a 1 on 1 fly. Needs just a single bullet on him, and he's going to be gone. Even if it's a body shot here, I think it just does just enough damage, and he's going to run up with a pistol. And he has the kit as well, so, oh, it's going to be the first round for Nostalgia. Oh, he just barely makes it. I thought for a second there, I thought for a second he was just a hair too late. But that is, yeah, that that was a great run, actually, up there for, like, by Fly. And what's worse for Fly, it's lucky that he had the smoke grenade, really. Because a Molly went down to block him off on Cat, and he had so little HP left that he, could, he wouldn't have been able to get there to support his teammate or even make that happen. He had to have that smoke in order to make that reach stick happen. So, very nicely done there by him. And that breaks the 16 and 0 dream. You know, very, very sad times. But <laughs> the dream is dead. You know, for nostalgia, maybe see if they can uh, bring a few more rounds together here, make the score look a little bit better. Although it seems like LDLC, they want revenge for that last round. They feel that uh, you know, they wanted that as well. The 16 and 0. Unreal, unreal. And then running headshot onto Kaylee. Luckily, uh, he managed to pull that off, but Uzi is here, and from Catwalk, we'll get the kills. So, it was a short-lived dream, guys. You know, the idea of getting a few rounds against LDLC and Nostalgia right back to square one. What's worse is their money is in complete and utter shambles. They're going to have to eco hard around and then just cross their fingers for the last one of the half. Yeah, and the, even that last buy is not going to be particularly good. That's It's going to be Famasis, or they're going to buy up with Colts and not really have that much needs. That is exactly what it's down to, but I mean, even then, you, you know, they've had plenty of rounds where they've had double AWPs and all the equipment they can need, and it has meant exactly nothing in the over in the grand scheme of things. And just look at it. I mean, it's it, it is really just LDLC running around looking for frags at this point. Yeah, there, there's not. <laughs> there's there's not really a lot of like, strategies being executed. It's more or less <clears throat> team LDLC spreading themselves then just going and look at this. Going for five yeah. ops. Five ops because why not? <laughs> <laughs> Works out. Yeah, they get uh, into lower dark uh, this uh, time. That's heartbreaking, but then nobody's <laughs> there. Oh, Bara! Oh! Bara and Fly! Each getting kills. Big play there. Fly actually managed to pick one up and see spawn. But Bara, through the smoke, will get one as well. This is actually a nostalgia turning it around here. After the cheek, Uzi will find MSC, but he gets returned on by Fly. Fly is quickly taken out by Apex, and this is all falling apart now. There's two guys alive here for LDLC. They're going to make it onto the B site. There's two hot on their heels here for Nostalgia coming in through dark. Yeah. And Vara needs to pick up a frag for this to work. Yeah, he might find a really good timing because I think mentally they might not realize he's going to be right behind them. But I think happy he heard the steps. Did he know? Happy's going to be walking right in, and Vara, come on! <laughs> no! It was that was the time to get a kill. That should have been a kill. That should definitely have been a kill. And I think if that's the kind of shots or that's the kind of situation that you can't really win, then I, I don't really see them getting many more rounds than that one they've already gotten. I guess they could 
could have a bit of a fortunate turn of events and pick up the pistol round, but I don't see this game going a lot further than uh, than that. But they are still gentlemen. Huge saying, good half world play, definitely good manners. And again, you know, we this is not the first time we've seen it. Uh, in the SLTV Star Series is just, you know, one team that's skill-wise much better than another team being played up against each other. We saw it just, uh, just before. Hell Racers was ESC was also very one-sided. That's just what it's like playing in a league like this. So, um, you know, it's all fun and games, but at the end of the day, it's not really Nostalgia's fault that they have been matched up against these guys. Uh, I, they're bound to run into matchups like this every oh, once yeah. in a while. When it, How many teams are there in SLTV? It's a lot. Yeah. It's 120 games uh, across the regular season, I guess, in SLTV. So that just speaks <laughs> speaks to how many teams that are actually in this league. So you're bound to have some sort of difference in skill level. That's just how it is. You can't really escape that. Fact. Well, the difference it's it's like you have 16 teams, right? You have 16 teams, and you don't even. I mean, like Nip aren't in this bracket right now. Uh, I think actually Nip are pretty much practically the odd, the odd men out here. Yeah, and I've yeah, yeah. this season, but I think they're yeah they're just about the only top European team who are not in SLTV this season. Yeah, mm -hmm. it is close to. So Oops. competition is pretty sacked. I think that's fair to say. Oh, <laughs> Kaylee. Yes. Please, like this Kaylee. is also one of the reasons why Nostalgia also are on one round. It's not all due to them not hitting their shots, but it's also the fact that all the LC are hitting some ridiculous shots. Yeah, and it keeps going. Apex and Kaylee with one more is going to leave MSC alone, and they everybody wants this kill. And Happy is maybe going to be able to get it. No, he's the one man going down. Actually, Uzi died as well. MSC looking to see if he can get one more, but it will be Apex with a double instead. And 15 to 1. And any chance of a ridiculous comeback has actually been gone for a very long time, but it's definitely gone now. And they're going to buy Deagles. I do love this. <laughs> That's the manly option. Deagle Kevlar all the way. That's four digs. They have four digs. If you're gonna die, you might as well be with a deal in your hand, right? Yeah, die like a man. They are just charging oh, I, out I here, looking up. for the shots. Not gonna get it. There's Hooch with one, and Spiker is gonna pick up one. Not exactly, uh, you know, perfect aim here, and he's also alone in a, you know, one on three. But let's see if we cannot get another one dig. Check the corner. Oh, okay. Almost perfect timing for Maniac. It's gonna be Uzi. Uzi's about to walk around to the exit for Longhouse. He's going to run right into Spiker, who has picked up an ump, but it's not going to be good enough. Uzi with the FAMAS closes it out. And there we have it. Nostalgia actually, you know, hooch, man. He's, he's wishing good luck and